Hi guys, so today I want to talk about Sarah Jessica Parker and the whole Kim Cattrall situation. First of all, let me start out by saying I never watched Sex in the City and I had no idea like it was like as bad as not reading the Bible. I mean, when I tell people I never watched it, people's jaws start dropping like, what? You never watched Sex in the City? What about the movies? N movies either. None of it. I don't know what it is. It just wasn't my cup of tea. I, I would say, well, maybe something else came on at the time, but I had no idea those series ran for six years. I just never got into it. But anyway, so, but that's what makes the story so fascinating to me because I never looked into it. So, of course, yesterday we all saw the news when Sarah Jessica Parker offered Kim Cattrall her condolences because Kim Cattrall's brother had passed away. He was missing at first and then found dead on his property. And they don't have a reason of cause of death just now. So when I heard that, this is when I came into the room, it was on television, that Kim basically said, I don't need your condolences, you know, sh shove it up your A. Now she didn't say shove it up your A, I I'm, I'm paraphrasing here, but she basically said, you know, take your condolences and, you know, get out of here with that. I, you know, I don't need you, you're not my friend, basically. I'm paraphrasing here. But I thought, well, who's, who does that? You know, someone says, you know, I want to offer you my condolences and you say shove it? Who does that? So I got fascinated. I was like, I need to find out what happened because this has to be something serious happened between these two people because I've never heard of anybody saying that, you know, shove your condolences, you know, where the sun doesn't shine, you know, in so many words, you know. So I had to investigate. So I had to go to my sources. <sighs> wow. I was absolutely blown away. This is a crazy at best story. And it starts back um, in season two. Okay. According to the rumors and my sources, everything was fine during season one and the show became a big hit, a big unexpected hit. They did not expect Sex in the City on HBO to blow up the way that it did. So I guess it was like the train that never could or whatever you know it was a big shock to everyone so and they said they didn't have a problem with Kim season one everybody liked her everybody was just working and you know they were a group of girls doing their job okay it wasn't now this is the rumors people the rumor is all of this is going on because Kim Cottrell is jealous of Sarah Jessica Parker these are the rumors now I'm gonna state the facts you come to your own conclusion what's going on but you know wow so they said everything was fine it all started in season two when sarah jessica parker got a promotion and got the title executive producer well kim was upset and she made her feelings known she thought that they all should have been on equal ground you shouldn't promote one over the other this is what's going on and she didn't keep it a secret people they said her this is when everything turned sour that was the season ran for six years, so that was the first year. So for five years, these people were living in pure hell, okay? It's, it's crazy, it's crazy, it's crazy. So they said Kim started distancing herself from the group and being very unsociable, and the women didn't do anything about it. At first, they just thought, well, you know, people are allowed to, you know, feel how they feel, and I guess the first cracks publicly was when they went to the Emmys when Sarah Jessica Parker won an Emmy and Kim was nowhere near the group. So the group is Cynthia Nixon and Kristen Davis, Sarah Jessica Parker. Okay, so she started distancing herself and acting really funny, but no one really said anything. So they respected her feelings and the word was, hey, this is a good cast. If it's not broke, don't fix it. So they let Kim basically have her little temper tantrums. That's what I'm going to call it. That's my word. I call it a temper tantrum. Because she didn't make herself the executive producer. It was offered to her. And people make decisions for different reasons. Maybe they thought she was the money maker of the group. Whatever. You have to deal with reality and what's really going on. You know, Kim, in a very nice way. You know, if maybe you just want a bigger star for whatever reason, I don't think it should have been taken out on Sarah Jessica Parker. But 
she was upset about this. But it gets worse. Then she asked for a pay raise. She made $350,000 per episode. Now, to people like me, that's very good money. I wouldn't complain. I'd be like the other girls. But you know, she wanted a million dollars. And she didn't get the pay raise. Okay, so, and you have to understand, Sarah Jessica Parker was getting treated like the star of the show. But there were two other cast members that was equally not getting the same amount that Sarah Jessica Parker was getting get was get was it was getting and she and the other two never complained. Um, Kristen and, and Cynthia just kind of accepted it for what it was. Sometimes the group is not all going to get treated as the group for whatever reasons. So unless you do a friend situation where you say we're not filming until everybody gets treated equally, it happens all the time. Like I don't, it's just, it's just the way Hollywood works. You have to know how it works. But, and when you have the title executive producer, it's different, it depends on your contract. It doesn't mean you get to do whatever you want when you feel like it. Sometimes it's just in name only, in credit only that they, they make you an executive producer, but you still don't have any say. We don't know what Sarah Jessica Parker's um, authority was. She could have been EP just in title only. But according to Kim, Kim felt, and this is the rumors, that Sarah Jessica had more power than she, than what was known, and if she wanted Kim to get a pay raise, that pay raise would have happened. So, 2016, they decide to make a Sex in the City 3. So, the for me, the Pierce Morgan interview is when Kim passed the point of no return and it was the beginning of the end. And to me, it was so uncalled for. Because there is a difference between fighting behind closed doors and now making it public. What was your reaction to Kim Cattrall telling Piers Morgan that you were never friends, just colleagues? I uh, just heartbroken. I mean, that whole week, you and I spoke yeah. about it endlessly because I was just, I don't know, I was really, I don't know, I found it very upsetting because that's, you know, that's not the way I recall our experience. You could see just how upset Sarah Jessica Parker was. I can't work around people like that, that totally bash you. Let alone, you know, it's hard enough with the rumored jealousy, which I believe, I really do think it starts stemmed from jealousy and money and that type of thing. I, you know, I'm going to be better than. And it just rolled out of control. And I've never heard of anybody rejecting anybody's condolences. When someone doesn't like you, Sarah, you have to accept it and move on. I think, and this is my personal feel, feelings, that they should make a Sex in the City 3, even though I, I've never watched them before. The show must go on. If it's a good series and it's good writing, you should do it with or without her. I mean, I'm, I'm even going to go so far as to say, you know, maybe you should just replace her and move on. Kim, does n Kim is in a very dark place and can't see past see any light at this moment and who who knows how long she's gonna be in this dark place I would just move on you know I just think you know it just comes across as jealous and ungrateful and just mean in my opinion but let me know in the comment section your opinion do you think Kim Cattrall is ungrateful and mean as I do we all have different opinions here and I won't bash you bash you for having a different opinion also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and that notification button for more stories like these. Until next time, talk to you then. Bye.